Hi everyone, I'm Moina, I'm Product Manager here at Mixpanel. And this is a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how you can use lookup tables within Mixpanel. So as a quick refresher, lookup tables give Mixpanel customers the ability to enrich their existing event properties and profile properties that they have in Mixpanel with additional data from outside of Mixpanel. It could be a product catalog, your content catalog details and whatnot. Uh, there are other blog posts, help center articles, other videos that talk in more depth about lookup tables and the problems it solves. This specifically talks about how you can actually use it. So why don't we get started? So for the example here, we are using um, a, a mappings of, a, of video names to the genre that the video belongs to. Uh, that's one of the sample lookup tables that we'll use. And we'll join this with a video name event property within Mixpanel. So a couple of things that you should know here is while I'm setting up the CSV, the first column itself needs to be the one that contains the unique values that you will join against in the event property. So if I have video name that I want to join against, the values for video name that I'll join against, those are the values that have to be contained in the first column. But again, the name of the column could be anything that I want. That's why I sort of called it some random name because it doesn't really matter. Uh, it just needs to be the first column itself. The values is what we'll use for joining. And then any new set of properties that I want to add should be added as different columns. And that's it. Uh, there's another example that I've used here for artists. So again, some random name and then instead of adding the genre, in this case, I wanted to add the artists. I could have clubbed them two together and that would have been perfectly fine. In this, I just want to show examples of two different lookup tables. And that's it. So here, my next step here would be to go ahead and download this as a CSV. So now we're ready and prepped to, to have the data be being pulled into Mixpanel. Again, I'm showing you how to get data into Mixpanel using the CSV upload route. You could take similar data and then use our APIs to get the data in as well. Uh, so let's actually go into Mixman. Here we are looking at the total number of watch videos broken down by the video name. Uh, but instead of looking at which specific video name is drawing uh, the most engagement from our customers, we actually want to find out which genre of users are drawing the most engagement. Uh, clearly, we don't have genre uh, available as an event property. But I can map this video name and bring in my CSV of these mappings that we just saw through the overflow menu. And here there's an option for me to map to lookup table from right within my code report. So I'm going to hit map to lookup table. If I already had this mapping that we just saw in Mixpanel, I could have just selected that from here. But since I don't have it, I can just go ahead and import the CSV from here. Uh, and I'm going to call this, is we're going to choose the genres. And that's it. We're bringing in the data that's relevant for our mappings. Mixpanel already knows that I want to map it to video name. And that's it. I'm going to hit apply. And now, immediately by clicking video name, I get to make a choice. Do I want to break it down by video name or do I want to break it down by genre? Well, in this case, I want to break it down by genre. And that's it. Gaming is the category for which the videos are actually drawing the most engagement. I could answer this question very easily without taking the data out of Mixman. Now, this sort of a flow gives me the ability to answer my question really quickly. But this mapping between the video name to genre is only going to be available on this report itself. It's only going to be seen on this report. My other colleagues that are doing their analysis on, on video engagement can't see this mapping. So what if I now want to make this available for all the users on this project? This particular flow is specifically for temporary mapping. But if I want to make this available for all our customers, all that I have to do is go into Lexicon, select the exact property that I want to map to, so I've now selected video name. I'm going to save map to lookup table. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit a refresh because that's that's the one that I just uploaded. And it should be 
video catalog genres. And that's it. Now, because I've done this in Lexicon and because I have the access, admins and owners are the only people who have access to making this change for all the customers. But if you are an admin or an owner and you want to make this mapping available for all users in the project, it's a very simple way of doing that. And uh, now that I've already done this mapping, I can go into it. Clearly now video name has a description, uh, which it already did, but now it has one additional detail, which is the mapped lookup table for this property is video catalog genres. And by the way, I can very easily click into it, go in and see the details on the lookup table itself. I can see that I am I have access of owner. It's created by me, the name. I can change the name if I want. I can give it a test description if I want. And it also shows me a backlink to, hey, this lookup table is mapped to this particular property, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm, this it's, it's a super powerful experience of starting from the report itself. Once you see what works for you, then actually making that mapping permanent. Um, but if I am a long time user of lookup table and I don't need to sort of go through the reports, if I'm an admin or an, owner, or an owner, I can actually come into lookup tables and import and map a lookup table to a property straight from the lookup tables tab in lexicon itself. So I can just go through once I hit it, hit import and lookup table, I could have gone through this and then selected the artists lookup table. Remember there was a second lookup table example that we had seen. And from there on, once this gets done, I can actually now decide that video name was permanently mapped to the genres table, but now I want to override that. And because I have the access to do that, I can now overwrite video name to be mapped to the artists mapping as opposed to the genres mapping. So let's see how that works. And it tells me, hey, this property is already mapped. Do I want to overwrite it? And the answer is yes. And that's it. I can now go into the artists lookup table now. And now it's going to show me, well, this, these are all the details. I can add a different description and it is linked back to the video name as well. Again, I can, I can download this lookup table if I want. I can replace it with a different version of the lookup table if I want. Um, I can delete this lookup table. If I delete this lookup table while it's already mapped, it's actually going to delete the table and remove the mapping in one swift call. So there's a lot of benefit in doing that. You don't have to worry about, well, what's going to happen to that. Uh, I can also share this lookup table. So right now, all new entities created within Mixpanel are private by default which means if I create this, only I can see this. And obviously people who have owner permissions can see this lookup table in their list. But if I now want to go ahead and make this available in other people's lookup tables lists, I can very easily do that. I can select what teammate I want to invite, give them whatever viewer or editor permissions that I want, hit share, and that's it. Now, the next time Anya, who is a colleague of mine, goes into her lookup tables, view, she will now see video catalog artists. Right. Uh, the experience of using lookup tables doesn't really change. You can, the way that you reference the underlying property, the way that you reference video name is the same way that you would reference video name and the enriched version of that. So whether it's genre, whether it's artists. So let's actually take a quick look at that too. So here, we have a simple funnel of watch video to comment. And earlier, when I was trying to break this down by video name itself, I could have done this experience and I would have gotten the video name uh, broken down, the, the, the funnel conversion broken down by each of the video name. But if I didn't want to break it down by the video name, but I wanted to break it down by the artist, it's a very similar experience. And that's it. I can now get that same experience and this works just like any other property in all of our core reports, insights, funnels, flows, retention, cohorts, explore everything. Some things for you to uh, note is when you're using lookup tables, 
there are some limitations that you should be aware of. Um, you can't have lookup tables more than 100 MB because um, you know right now we 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 want to make sure the experience of using lookup tables and querying lookup tables is snappy. So that you can read up our documentation for more details on the limitations, but just keep that in mind. So this was a quick overview of how to set up the data, bring the data in within Mixpanel, mapping it, and then actually making a bunch of queries with that map lookup table. If you have any questions, please reach out to us uh, and we'd be happy to answer those questions and get you set up.